Hey, it marks National Foster Care Month. It's a call for all of us to step up and support foster youth. With more, I'm joined by Shane Harris, the president of the civil rights group. It's called the People's Association of Justice Advocates. It's a nonprofit that Shane founded. Congratulations on all the work, important work you do. Thanks for being with us tonight. Thank you. It's good to be here. You call this issue a civil rights issue, that of foster care and foster youth. What makes it so? What do you mean by that? Well, you know, across America, uh, there's over 365,000 kids in foster care and nearly 30 percent of those foster youth are african-american children uh latino children are disproportionately represented and native american children are disproportionately represented and so when we look at prevention poverty a lot of the other long-standing pipelines that lead to kids ending up in care kids like me it is very important that we look at this through the lens of civil rights and through the lens of social justice uh, and equity in order to improve the outcomes of the children in our foster care system. And you look at it through the lens of your personal view. I do. Because you came from the foster care system. You lost your parents when you were just five? I did. Uh, I lost my um, father when I was eight years old. Um, I was in and out of foster care between, there's my parents there, between six and uh, five and uh, eight years old. And then I lost my dad when I was eight. Ended up in foster care because my mom was on drugs and in San Diego County, that's where I'm from, and my mother died when I was 16. So I ended up in a cycle of instability going through multiple homes, uh, over eight different placements, group homes and foster homes alike. Never was adopted. I always say there's a privilege in foster care that we often don't talk about. Some kids get adopted, some kids get better opportunities than others. But I am certainly an exception to the rule. Thank you for sharing your story. I'm so sorry you went through all of that. It obviously shaped who you are, and that's why you founded your nonprofit. Tell us a little bit about the work that you do with your nonprofit. So we're a national civil rights organization and policy think tank founded to keep Dr. Martin Luther King's dream alive and founded in his tradition of organizing. And when we look at the issues uh, that we're taking stances on, uh, one of the things that's unique about us is we are the only national civil rights organization uh, that is specifically focused on closing the disproportionate gap of black and brown and Native American children in the child welfare system. We see child welfare through the lens of civil rights because we look at the families that are heavily impacted in comparison to their white counterparts and how the communities that they grow up in, the challenges that they uh, bear with education and other pipelines that lead to this system, uh, how, how they get there. And so um, we are championing a lot of reforms and doing a lot of work uh, on the system and, and addressing child welfare reform across the country and throughout the state as, as an equity issue. Yeah, and you're supporting a bill that Alex actually spoke to Assembly Member Shannon Grove. She's out of Bakersfield mm -hmm. that she put forward. And this has to do with uh, child tr sex trafficking victims and the fact that 60% of them have some sort of connection to the foster care system. Talk to us about the importance of this work you're doing. Well, you know, uh, SB 1414 is a state law that I believe will be a game changer in addressing uh, sex trafficking and particularly child sex trafficking across our state. I don't think people know that 60% of trafficking victims are foster youth or have been in foster care at some point. And I think what we really need to look at this through the lens of not who's bringing it forth, it's a Republican or a Democrat or what is the best way. No one, no one should be able to purchase a child for sex and be able to get a misdemeanor. They ought to pay a price for that, especially, in, which is in this bill, when they are continuing to perpetuate these children. It's not just a one-time offender, second time, third time. At what point does the state say enough is enough? And I think that this legislation is a game changer uh, in that space. You've yeah. gotten the ears of our highest officials. I'm talking about the President of the United States. You've talked to President Biden. You meet regularly with Governor Newsom. You have meetings with Karen Bass, the mayor of Los Angeles. How are they helping you? So, you know, um, we, we are working very hard on a lot of 
uh, legislation. I mentioned SB 1414, but I also have the ear and I am very supportive of my fellow former foster youth brother, Assembly Member Isaac Bryan from right here in Los mm -hmm. Angeles. He's working on a bill, AB 2906, which will ban counties across the state of California from taking foster children, survivor and disability benefits, a practice that has been going on in this state for decades. Uh, but I have had the chance to talk to the president. I have had the chance to, uh, you know, every May I meet with the governor and I pin him up. This year I'm very concerned uh, with uh, the cuts to foster care uh, services. Mm -hmm. uh, tremendous cuts in his May revise and I am, you know, talking to him personally, privately, publicly about those cuts and very concerned. Um, he's, he also vetoed uh, the, the law last year that Brian brought forth to ban counties from taking foster children and survivor and disability benefits. So I think having these conversations, right, being mm -hmm. able to get to the table is not just about you being able to get there, but to understand why you're there. Mm -hmm. And I understand when I go into these spaces and rooms and the people that I'm talking to that I am there for the kids that are coming behind me to make sure that they do not have to face the same odds that I face. Your why is very personal. We thank you for sharing your story and all of your incredible work you're doing. Shane Harris, president of the People's Association of Justice Advocates, thanks so much. Thank you.